Welcome back to Alliance's Heroes, where heroes in business align. To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliance's, visit www.alliances.com. Now, back to our super host, David Kogan, founder of Alliance's. I mean, we just had, what an incredible morning, the CEO of Laserfish, a $100 million plus company, and we just had on the CEO of P.F. Chang's, I mean, a $1.1 billion company. It just, the heroes, it's off the hook where we learn so many secrets about them. Now, you know how people sometimes say in conversations, you know, it's not rocket science. Well, this one really is. We have with us the NASA scientist, Hakim Olusheyi. Hakim, you call yourself the gangsta nerd. How old were you when you set your sights on working for NASA and being an astrophysicist? All right. Uh, well, uh, first, let me make a correction. I never called myself the gangster nerd. That, that was created by the blogger at TED, TED.com, Karen Ang. She wrote an article called The uh, Rise of a Gangster Nerd. And wow. from there... Yeah, back in 2012 or 13. So I, you know, I didn't really set my sights young on being a physicist because I didn't find out until uh, I was in college that that was a thing, really. Um, I just knew I was always drawn to science. Now, what exactly is an astrophysicist? Because, I mean, I took astronomy in college, and, boy, I have a challenge there. I wish I had your phone number at that time. What's an astrophysicist? <laughs> Yeah, you know, you'd be surprised. Um, an astrophysicist typically does one of three things, right? They're the people that we call observers that go out to telescopes and take data. There are people that, uh, like myself, d develop technologies, right? So a lot of the technologies that I've developed have been uh, detectors and, um, you know, optics technologies. And then there are the people, well, almost everybody does data analysis, where you take the science that comes from the observatories, you take the theory, which are the set of laws that govern uh, the physics of the situation, and you know you match the two together to try to figure out what's going on billions of miles away, right? <laughs> but and, and I guess of course you can say there are the theorists who basically just create computer models of what's happening in these uh, astronomical environments, or they write down equations try to figure out fundamental things about how, uh, you know, the, the, the stars, the planets, the galaxies, and the universe as a whole behave, interact, what's going to happen, what has happened. Yeah. Uh, I, and we're getting a lot of people who want to know how to reach you. So, again, they could reach you by going to Twitter, and I'm going to give your Twitter handle out. That's at H-A-K-E-E-M-O-L-U-S-E-Y-I. We'll also have the information in the link on our website at alliances.com, where entrepreneurs align. And it's with me, the host of the Alliances Hero Show, David Kogan. And we're talking with the NASA scientist and astrophysicist, Hakeem Olusheyi. Now, Hakeem, I mean, this is just... Yes, sir. Uh, how, how, how did you... How are you able to memorize all the information and things that you need to to be able to become an astrophysicist? It's love. It's love and it's passion, uh, you know, and it's something that you don't really have to. Well, don't, don't get me wrong. When you're doing your formal education, you have to work really hard. Uh, the stuff is, you know, it, things are heavily mathematical. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, at the end, it, it, when it's all put together in your mind, it kind of seems easy. But when you're learning it, oh, man, does it ever seem hard, right? But, um, you know, you just put in the effort. Whatever it is you're going to have expertise in, whether it's plumbing or, you know, forestry or astrophysics. It's pretty much the same process. Put in the time. If you have the love and the passion, that makes it a lot easier. Now, you're also a host of a number of science shows on TV, How the Universe Works, Outrageous Acts of Science, Strip the Cosmos. I mean, how did you get involved within the TV end, and did you ever think you'd be on TV? You know, I did not think I'll, I'd be on TV. I'll tell you what happened. It's one of these things. A, a lot of the good things that have happened to me in life happened out of serving others, right? And so it turned out that uh, there was a person who was hired by Discovery Networks to, for the purpose of finding talent to put in television shows. And so she reached out to me and for a particular show. And I didn't get the role. But then she contacted me again, and she said, hey, Hakeem, didn't you go to Stanford for graduate school? And I said, yeah, I did. 
And she goes, I remember you, and I remember that you used to help out a lot of people, so I'm going to help you out. I'm going to find a way to get you in Discovery, even though you didn't get this show. And that year, Discovery formed a scientific advisory committee um, in 2008, and she got me on that committee with, you know, uh, well-known people like Michio Kaku and Brian Greene. Uh, you know, I was I was known inside of science, but not outside of science, right? And um, so... It took another uh, four years for me to get on television, but that's how it happened. That was the initiation of it. I love it. And we're talking with a NASA scientist and astrophysicist, Hakeem Olusheyi. You could reach him at his Twitter account, at H-A-K-E-E-M-O-L-U-S-E-Y-I, because you're listening to the Alliance's Hero Show. Now, be a hero and go to where entrepreneurs align. Be part of the community at alliances.com. That's E L I A N. CES.com, the place, again, where entrepreneurs align. Hakeem, am I allowed to ask you anything about aliens? Well, you can, but the answer, you know, you're going to get a... Uh... <laughs> You're going to get a pretty scientific answer, right? It's not going to be uh, conspiratorial or anything like that. Well, you co-authored, too. I mean, you're doing so many things. You're an author, too, of yeah. a children's popular science book. I love it. Discover yes, Spaceopedia, the complete guide to everything space. What, do you, what are some of the secrets you want to share with children about what you do or really explaining about space and how maybe someday they can have this incredible career that you've had? What are some of those secrets? Yeah, so I, I tell you, the thing about the career is, you know, you don't know going into it, right? You know, it, it, you know, my background, you know, neither of my parents even graduated high school. My father was uh, born in Mississippi in the country, right? You know, dropped out of school when he was nine years old. My mother, uh, she dropped out of school when she was 16 years old. And, um, you know, and here it is today. I'm, a, you know, known for being a highly educated, you know, astrophysicist. And so it just goes to show that if you have the passion, if you're diligent, you work hard, you reach out to others and share your enthusiasm and your passion, then, you know, if you happen to have some talent in it or commitment to it, then, you know, things will progress. Um, and, you know, the, the, the beauty of the field that you wouldn't imagine is the human interactions, because what happened for me is the fact that because of my education, the community that I came from, where very few people went to college, you know, younger people saw my life, and now, you know, half of them go to college, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing that's happened is because of my particular background, you know, I had a passion for going around the country and going around the world and helping people in a very similar situation to myself to let them know that, you know, because I think what stops people quite often is identity, right? People think, oh, you know, that's not me. I'm not the math genius or I'm not rich enough to pay for college. And I go around and I let them know, no, it is for you, right? You are smart enough. You know, you, you're just giving them too much credit. You know, if, if you want to walk from the East Coast of America to the West Coast, all you got to do is take, start taking steps westward, right? Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is worry about your next step. Don't look at the big journey ahead. Just do what you need to do today. And you'll get there. Phenomenal advice. And, Akeem, you're best known, too, well, for many things, but another one is for scientific contributions in research on the transfer of mass and energy through the sun's atmosphere, the development yes. of space-borne observations for studying astrophysical plasmas and dark energy. I mean, I, I feel smarter just asking you about this. But <laughs> first, really, what is dark energy? That's the question. That's the billion trillion dollar question. You answer that question, you've you've changed humanity. Uh, here here is here is how we understand that dark energy exists. So the universe is expanding. So when we look at the universe, we're talking about galaxies. Just like the cell is the basic building block of your body, the galaxy is the basic building block of the universe. And all the galaxies appear to be moving away from each other. So the universe is expanding, um, and what 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 should be happening is that rate of expansion should be slowing down because all of these galaxies are gravitationally attracted to each other, right? And so people attempted to measure the rate that it was slowing and discovered that it, it, it slowed for half the age of the universe, but then for the last 7 billion years, it's been actually speeding up, right? So let me give you an example that's more down to Earth. Instead of galaxies separating in space, let's take a baseball and a planet separating in space, right? Let's call it planet Earth. So if I take a baseball and I throw it straight up, once it leaves my hand, it slows down. 
no matter what, no matter how fast I throw it, it slows down the farther away it gets, right? Right. But imagine it slows down for a time period, and then suddenly it begins to speed up. Somehow it's getting more energy. We have no idea what that energy is, so we call it dark energy. And what we think dark energy is is a is a property of space itself, that there's this energy that's in space, and that energy – is negative, right? So, and, and because of that, it has negative gravity. So normally, things have positive energy, and gravity is attractive. But if it has negative energy, gravity is repulsive, and it's causing the universe to expand at an ever-increasing rate. Unbelievable. I'm going to have yeah. to hire you for my children when they end up going to college and have to take astronomy. This, this is just... <laughs> I, that, that, it's one of the things I do. I educate America's children. I, you know, for eight years I was a professor at the Florida Institute of Technology. I'm still on staff there. I'm on assignment at NASA, but I'm still a, a distinguished professor of physics and space sciences at Florida Institute of Technology. And you know, that you know, I typically have 10, 15 young people working for me in my research group every year. So it's, I love to do that. Well, Akeem, you're a hero. You inspire others to learn more about space science. You're the one that's unlocking the secrets of the universe, developing new scientific in- instrumentation and techniques. Follow Hakeem Olusheyi at Twitter, H-A-K-E-E-M-O-L-U-S-E-Y-I. And when we return, we're going to have the Gallup Strengths Finder expert at RiseStrengths.com. David Kogan with Eliances. <laughs> 